Let's start off with uh, conversations in Nigeria, where a former governor of River State in person of Peter Odili has endorsed Governor Sinfu Bara, the current leader of the state, as the political leader of the state. Uh, the former governor also praised the governor for defending the interest of the people. Odili who ruled River State between 1999 and 2007 said that Fubara has attained the position of leadership, having secured his electoral victory both through the ballot and at the courts. Now joining me on the program to furthermore expand on this is Okunabo Nkotaria, civil rights activist and uh, former special advisor to Governor Wike. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the program. Thank you, Dabo. And good evening, Nigerians. Good evening. Now, uh, let me start off with your reaction to uh, what the former governor of the state said. In his words, he said, Our people said I should tell you uh, to stand with the president and align with his positive policies and link the people of Rivers with the center. They have asked me to tell you that you are the political leader of Rivers State. Rivers people say, Where you go, they will go with you. Where you stand, they will stand with you. Don't look back, stay focused, knowing that your people are behind you. End of quote. Uh, those were the words of uh, Governor Odili. What do you make of this statement, uh, given the fact that uh, formerly he has endorsed him uh, as uh, the leader, political leader of the state? Some said it's uh, more like a subtle jab uh, on the former governor, uh, Governor Wike. Uh, well, first and foremost, the endorsement is more or less like a recognition hmm. of the fact. It's, it's axiomatic. You don't need uh, any further proof to say the governor, Governor Sam Fogarana, is the leader of the party in the state. Because it is also, I think, in their constitution, a PDP constitution, I mean, where the governor of the state is the leader of the party in that state, and if the governor of that state does not belong to the ruling party or belong to another big party, then the chairman of that party is the leader of that party in that state. Ditto the federal level, where the president is the leader of the party all over. Not that I am in support of that idea, but for best reasons known to the party leaders, they came up with that. Because in 1999, we had the leader of the party, and we also had the governors and president. But since 19, sorry, 1979, but from 1999, we've always had the governors and the presidents as leaders of their party. So, In, uh, in Kotari, are you there? It seems we lost connection with you. Angry. Okay, it I think we have you back. It is, it, it is a fact of the matter. You see, they said truth. It was Winston Churchill who said truth mm. is incontrovertible. Malice anger and so on by deride it by distort it but there it is and the governor just stated the obvious that's why i say it's just an axiomatic he stated the obvious so nobody should be angry when the fct minister was the governor of river state he was the leader of the party mm. and he even abused it when i said abused it he used that office to purchase forms he said it himself for all candidates, which is not proper, which is very anti-democratic. Hmm. And well, I still don't understand why he has not been questioned. He has not been quizzed for that act. Hmm. So uh, the governors are leaders of their parties. Why would that incense anybody? Why will it generate the kind of furore it is generating, if not for malicious reasons? Hmm. All right, uh, let, let's of course uh, invite uh, Ikinga Chibike, a spokesperson for the All Progressives uh, Congress, uh, River State. I understand that he will join at some point uh, on the program. But let me uh, stay with you. 
uh, in Kotaira. Now, uh, one other issue on ground right now, particularly as regards the state, is the uh, influence of the former governor, talking about uh, the current governor, uh, minister of the FCT, Ayin Sumwike. Some, you know, have uh, considered his, uh, will I call it, um, influence and activities in the state as pretty much overbearing. Do you, do you think that is the case? You mean well, as the governor or as the FCT minister? Uh, well, uh, or both? Both. Both. As a governor, yes. I can say yes because it was draconian. It hmm. was more or less a situation where it's either you're with me or I come after you. And we have plenty of cases to bolster that. But some we also categorize uh, that as loyalty are, in politics. Sorry? Loyalty. Some sorry? see it as loyalty in politics. No, they are two different things. Hmm. But now, for example, if you say your loyalists might have certain benefits, it's understandable. But a situation where whoever reasons are tangent to you is being haunted, it's a different thing altogether. That's where dictatorship comes in. I hope the clarity of what I'm trying to say, the explanation, will penetrate your minds and the minds of listeners and logic capture their judgment. Mm. There is a great distinction between benefits for loyalists and punishing those, going after those who are not loyalists. There are two different things altogether. For example, if I'm loyal to you, or if you're loyal to me, I can decide to say, I buy you a car. I buy you a house. Take a medical trip abroad. Those kind of things. But those who are not loyal, I might, I will not go after them, but might not even buy them a car, take them abroad for medical trips, or give them a house. That's the decision I'm trying to make. But a situation where because I don't belong to the same camp with you, you're going to come after me, close down my businesses, filling stations, come up with trumped up charges. That is not loyalty. That is dictatorship. That's, you're becoming draconian. So that's the distinction. That's the distinction. And I hope those who are listening will, will try to understand what I've just explained. Mm. Now, if you talk of being overbearing, yes, that is the truth. What is the problem? I mean, he himself said, you cannot touch a structure. Once you leave office, you don't talk of structure anymore. Once you leave office, even if you have a structure, so to speak, you know, you cannot impose that structure on the masses, on the electorate, on the people. It's, now, in River State, for example, if you talk of structure, the godfather of structure was Dr. Peter Dele. After Peter Dele, we had, I mean, I didn't last for so long, we had Ruth Mitchell and Mitch. He had his own structures. After Amici, we had Wiki. Now we have Fawara. The governor is, the, is your, the political head in that state, while the president in the country. So if you talk of your own structure, nobody should talk, then definitely you're spoiling for a fight with the governor. It doesn't matter if you're instrumental to his emergency or not. He's a governor. And that is why a lot of people are peeved. Because any affront on the governor is an affront on the reverse people. Why do you think most of them have immunity? Even though some of us are saying the immunity is being abused. Why do you think they have that immunity? You enjoyed most of these things. And you don't want your successor to enjoy them. Is that not being selfish? Is that not being egocentric? And that uh, is the bane. That is the problem we have. In this uh, uh, all right. Uh, let's uh, invite Ikinga Chibike, that spokesperson for the All Progressives Congress of River State, to this conversation. Ikinga, thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure. All pleasure. right. All right. Uh, I mean, uh, what do you make of this statement uh, by the former governor of uh, River State in person of uh, 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 Mr. Peter Odeliwe said, he was telling the current governor, your government is aligning correctly with President uh, Bola Ahmed Sinubu's government, especially in the area of education, agriculture, and now health sector. Uh, people said, I should tell you to stand with the president 
and align with its positive policies and link the people of River State with the center. What does this suggest? We know that the governor is a member of the uh, opposition party, People's Democratic Party, the PDP, and now uh, the, of course, uh, uh, will I call it elder statesman of the state, in person of uh, former Governor Peter Adelie, saying your government should align or is aligning with the center. We know that the center belongs to the APC. What do you make of this? Well, um, thank you for having me once again. I think that that is uh, the view of uh, His Excellency Dr. Peter Adele, and he's entitled to it. But is that but really we true? Do not act we do not agree with him in total. Hmm. Why is yeah, that? The reason, being, the reason being that the governor has politicized his governance. The governor, after elections have come and gone, ought to have taken the entire reverse along, entire reverse people along. But uh, the governor has become sectional, which is now part of the reason why the person of uh, Dr. Peter Lee will say, reverse people say, I should tell you. When did he become the spokesperson of reverse people? So that is that's entirely his own um, view about how Governor Fuba is uh, uh, taking the governance of reverse state. But as far as we are concerned as a party, we are disappointed because the governor has abandoned governance for party politics, which is what gave rise to what Dr. Peter Lee just said. Okay, and now you, you talk about petty politics. I would like you to expatiate more. Um, uh, you know, we know that uh, right now the current governor uh, is having issues with, you know, his predecessor, and that seems to, uh, you know, spike up from time to time conversations here and there. Would you like to appreciate what exactly the areas of distraction, you know, you, you were talking about? Okay. Uh, quickly, I'd like to say that the governor ought to have taken reverse people together as one united state, but the governor had become sectional. He has chosen some that he feels that are with him. If you check his utterances, it doesn't uh, doesn't tell good of a governor. Where he says, if you if you are not loyal to me, you have dug your grave. If you are not loyal to me, you have dug the pit and you fall into it. Those are not uh, statements that are statemently. As governor of River State, he's the leader of this state. The leader of this state by virtue of his position as a governor. So he has to take every interest along. But you see that they've sectionalized uh, the leadership of the state. Things are not properly done. And then you see people, every day the governor is funding people who go to uh, what they call uh, one uh, Thanksgiving, and he keeps insulting other leaders of the state. And that's not nice, especially insulting his benefactor. If yes, so we can, it's not nice. It doesn't tell good of him. Should tomorrow God say he should... Uh, um, succeed in uh, putting someone to take over from him. But and don't you also feel, so you talked about his benefactor, <laughs> sorry. Don't you also feel that his benefactor is a major contributor to, uh, to the distraction? Uh, we see from time to time loyalists uh, to the benefactor at some point wanting to uh, impeach the current governor. I mean, that, that's a big distraction to a government in power. <laughs> No, that's party politics. Uh, it's, it's a disagreement between the legislative and the executive. It has nothing to do with his benefactor. We are talking about issues now. So if the House of Assembly disagrees with the governor, they can meet, they can have a meeting point and they resolve their differences. That has, that has nothing to do clearly with the minister, his benefactor. So that's not the issue in point. What we are saying is that the box stops on the table of the governor and the, and the governor of the state has to take every interest along for peace and tranquility to be in the state. That is the truth. But what we have is that the governor has become sectional with his policies. He has become sectional with his actions in the state. And these are things that have created the wrong way you're you are seeing, created the dissatisfaction, discontent among the people of River State. Mm. All right. Uh, let, let me uh, ask uh, in Kotaria. I mean, what's your reaction to this, particularly on the aspect of the governor being sectional? That's mendacious. That's mendacious. It's not true. The mm. governor is not sectional. I mean, first and foremost, he has not abandoned government. Rather, his efforts in ensuring good governance to a very large extent has been inhibited by the State House of Assembly. On the issue of making unguarded statements, we all know who makes unguarded statements. We all know that. I mean, the records are there. You have them. If you Google, you'll see. The governor himself is naturally a taciturn human being. And he has actually restrained himself for so long 
But you ask yourself, well, when you're pushed to the wall, you, I mean, you bounce, you bounce back with a double effort. I mean, it, like they say in literature, for how long we feel his best, tremble in silence before his bonus. So there are some provocative statements. When he's talking of now, when the governor talked about the local government chairman, when they went to, I think, in Donny, he was, he was, he was staggered. He was dazed when he saw the local government chairman because in all the governor's activities, the local government chairman, most of them boycotted, if not all of them. And you know, under the former governor, Jason Wiki, you dare not try that. You dare not. You won't last in office for even a second. And so when they saw him, he was a little bit dazed. He was surprised. And that's why he said, ah. But then, all those, don't forget, we're talking of a sitting governor. He said, all those who have done this are digging their graves. Probably, probably and obviously what the man is talking about is the political grief. You just said it that in politics it is loyalty, and we are trying to uh, 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 define loyalty and the kind of loyalty. And he said, "Hold oh, on, if you are definitely not with me, and say, for example, you want to go for a second term, why will I want? Why will I want to support you? For example, I'll do anything within my powers, within my powers, to ensure that you don't return. But if at the end of the day you return, so be it." That's when he was talking of your grave. You did your political grave. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you talk of incendiary comments, you know, you can play, you can Google. This who has been making incendiary comments. Comments trying to incite intifada in this state. Who? Who has been talking of structure? Who has been talking of, you can't do this, I, am, I must do this, this must be done. Who has been saying all that? The governor, now if you know for very well, his excellence, you know that he's not very tacit on. He's had the thoughts. And he will tell you that he doesn't believe in monster. Even when he was campaigning, he said, I'm an, account I'm an accountant. I am not a lawyer. So you don't expect him to speak much. He believes in action. I'm not the war. All right. Uh, in Kotaria, let's uh, go. Okay. Let's... And if you talk of Dr. Peter Lee, who was the leader? The leader, excuse me. Peter Lee was, was the governor of the state and an elder state's when a father. And you ask the question, on whose marriage is he saying the first people said? People who, of course, still respect, even the of Wiki, refer to him as his godfather. And that without him, he wouldn't have been where he is today. Because when it was time for a second day, his name was removed. He ran to him to, to, to just marry Adeline. Who took his case to Peter? And he was reinstated. And for that reason, he respected him all through. So if the today, the man is saying, and the man is not even saying, no. You're bringing somebody that I don't like to succeed you. Up to that point, you agreed with him. We had a disagreement, was probably the impeachment. And so at that point, they disagreed. And for a father and elder statement, what do you expect? Because the question you ask yourself is, what were the impeachable offenses? What were they? That's the question you ask yourself. All right. So uh, he has every right. Let's let's go right to, to Kenya now. He has his own followers. As a former Rivers State governor, he has his own crowd. He has his own followers. He's being respected. He has uh, every right to say that Rivers State will set. All right. So let's let's go to Ikenga now. Um, Ikenga, let's talk about uh, the influence yes. of um, the former governor of the state in Sumuike. I mean, as a member, as a member of the opposition, that's the People's Democratic Party, and a minister under the current administration. The minister of the FCT. Some would consider this uh, anti-party activities. Do you do do you see that, particularly maybe you know at the center of the you know uh, the state? Yeah, just before I do so, I think that uh, your guest, uh, your guest uh, of Nabon Kotaria, is rationalizing the threats coming from the governor as uh, a normal thing. That's not right. No matter how the governor is provoked, he's the governor of the state and must give opportunity to people to ventilate and then bring everyone together. Assuming without considering to him that uh, the past governor was uh, threatening people. Did he say it was right? So if it was not right at the time, according to him, that the last governor did threaten people, is it, should it be right now? So he's only rationalizing it. What I have said clearly is that the governor, being the governor of the state, shouldn't be threatening people. Loyalty is end. No, he cannot cajole people, he cannot threaten people to succumb, he cannot uh, uh, subdue them because they probably share uh, a different political view with you. That's not right. 
That's what I'm saying on that. And then on the issue of the uh, current minister... Should I quickly, uh, re should um, I quickly respond or I let you finish? In an APC, uh, working in an APC government... Let's, let's uh, allow Ikinga to finish and then you respond. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay, please, let's allow Ikinga to finish and then you respond. Thank you. Now, in uh, the question you raised about the minister working with an APC government, if you remember, collaborations have been happening even before these 2023 elections. You remember that in 1983, uh, Chief Emmanuel Aguma, Onum Bambrebisi, became minister of the federal government, uh, NPN-led federal government. He was a staunch member of uh, PDP, uh, of MPP in River State, but he became a minister in an NPN-led government. So, so you call, so you had, call uh, what is happening right now, sorry, you are calling what is happening right now collaboration. But he actively, campaign, he, he actively campaigned against your party during the elections. Now, there are also people in my party, leaders in my party, the APC, that work for Atiku. So these are things that people do, politicians mm. do all the time. So nothing out of place. And so you, you, you're entirely comfortable with it? Well, it's protection of interest. My mm. party was favored, and I'm happy about it. If PDP members collaborate with my party to uh, support us, uh, achieve success, why, why should I be against that? All right, uh, let's, let's go to uh, Inkotaria <laughs> now. Uh, your reaction, please. Well, like uh, Ikenga at least said, he said, I'm trying to rationalize. That's what he's also trying to do concerning the anti-party that uh, the FCT minister played. You see, there's a difference. You talked of Emmanuel Agoma of blessed memory. Now there's a difference so that we don't get things modeled up. In, in the, after the election, if for capacity, competence, and uh, uh, pedigree, you have been chosen by the government in power, even if you belong to different political parties, different in altogether. Nobody's going to accuse you of anti party. But you are being accused of anti party when you work against your own party for the success of another. And that's what happened. And that's why people are talking about the anti party. But if you, after your elections, of course, because I always say to people, I always tell people, I always argue that once the elections are over, it's one Nigeria. It doesn't really matter. In fact, even after the election, if you cross over to the other party, no problem. It doesn't really matter. Because the politics is a consensus circle of conspiracies and articulated interests. So it doesn't matter. But you don't be in a political party and work against that party. It is not even morally right. And that's, that's the difference between that of Chief, the late Chief Ibao Lagoma, and this case. Otherwise, if you can decide to even choose uh, P2B, you can, you can appoint P2B to be anything. You can appoint even a chief to be anything. There's no problem with that. The elections are over. It's one country. It happened even in America. Hillary Clinton. But not before. Not during, and especially working against the success of your own party in favor of another political party. Then it becomes anti-party. So let us appreciate that distinction. Mm. All right. I, I, I'd like to go back to, I know it's to the credit. Of, I know it's to the credit of uh, Ikenga because he's, he's APC. So uh, <laughs> uh, uh, whoever, okay. whoever, like the president said, whoever moves over to, will I throw away the person? Mm. They, can go, they can move. So they can cross. No problem. So it's, okay. it's credit. But let mm. us, because we're on, we're on live TV now. Mm. So let us try and make that distinction. So what I'm trying to say is that the issue, the Agoma's uh, example, doesn't fall in. Because there are two different issues. The Agoma did not work against his own party. No. All right. Of blessed memory. All right. Uh, let's, let's go to Ikenga right now. Ikenga, please feel free to react to some of the things uh, Inkotaria said. Uh, let's talk about your party in the state. Um, how unified or how solid do you think uh, the APC party and river status as a formidable opposition. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Opunawan Kataria is uh, saying there's a distinction between uh, what happened in uh, uh, 1983 and what is happening now. I don't think that there is any distinction. The same thing, same turn and tempest. Let me tell you what, politics is about interest. It's about interest protection. And like he said about conspiracies and uh, what uh, one of our veterans used to say, that politics is about 
uh, uh, Chief, uh, Chief uh, Imaya, he said that um, what is this about uh, conspiracies? He used to say so, and also say it's about psychology, unquote. Uh, <laughs> Let me say something. It's about protection of interests. There are people who have been in uh, in APC, even uh, the governor, Fubara is my friend, is, but he's our governor today. Even governor Fubara is a beneficiary of that collaboration. So when you try to say that uh, Chief Wike did anti-party, I don't understand what that means. Even the governor who is sitting there today is a beneficiary of the of the of the collaboration between APC at the national level and the gov the then governor of Fiverr State, Chief so Wike. So you have to put all of them in perspective at the same time. It is about interest protection, and they protected their interests, and that is why they are where they are. To that's why PDP is a, is is in government in River State. If Chief Wike, the minister of FCC, a former governor, did not do what he did, probably would be in government house today. Would have been turning cold. So when you want to criticize the uh, uh, chief Wike, you must know that his role, his organization, his, uh, uh, his, his contact, his reach made it possible for uh, the PDP to win in River State and also supported the president of the APC to win at the national level. Having said that, I want to say that APC had had challenges before now, before this new caretaker committee came on board. And it was as a result of the challenges um, we have had. We had impacted problems, which uh, led to factionalization of the party that led to the National Executive Committee through the National Working Committee ushered in this new executive, caretaker, in caretaker status. I want to tell you that the party has been recalibrated, has been rejigged. The party has reached out to its uh, members across lines. And then we are more united today to ensure that we win all the other elections coming forward. And then we're also happy that there is a crack in the house of the PDP because they benefited, they benefited bountifully from the challenges APC had had in the state over the years. So we are happy that they also are having the problem so we can uh, latch on that and then deliver uh, a victory for our people for, uh, for, for greater governance and good governance of the people. So and how is the APC, that, how is the APC lashing on the cracks? That, sorry? How is the APC lashing on the cracks? How is the APC taking advantage of the cracks in the state? Well, that's what I'm saying. They are, we are taking the advantage because we have provided good leadership, good uh, party management today. That's why you have seen that 27 members of the Riverside House Assembly, who we are here to PDP members, have crossed over. And we hear on good authority that Governor Sin Fubara is also willing to come to our party. And we are waiting if he's ready to come to our party, come through the proper door. We'll also accept him. And we need people who will add value to our party and not a uh, problem uh, creators. That's what we are doing. So if you look at all these uh, things happening within APC, you do know that we are ready to take over the reins of government in River State. Mm. Okay, uh, just uh, before I let you go, Inkotara, do you have any reactions to this? I mean, particularly when he said that the governor might just, you know, jump ship. Well, when he talked of interest, let me address that quickly. Mm. Yes, it's about interest. But let us also not justify anti-party activities while it's about interest. You don't justify anti-party activities. Anti-party is anti-party, and that's why the political parties don't treat that with levity. Now, having said that, on the issue of the governor jumping ship, we heard it. It was a rumor. The air was suffused with that. But from my findings, that story is not true. From my findings. But I cannot speak on that for the governor because he has not talked with me on that. He has not discussed anything like that with me. He has not discussed anything like that with anybody that I know. So I cannot come and speak on that. But from findings, from the filler, snippets of information we get, I get, that's not true. It's not ready to jump ship. That mm. is it. But you know, in politics, one hour, one day, one second means a lot. But as we speak right now, no, I don't have that information. And when I asked, they said it's not true. It's, it's not true. So on the issue of jumping on ship, no. On the issue of the winning the election in 2027, well, any political party member will tell you his party is going to win. No doubt about that. But if the governor continues on this trajectory, on this, his policies, people-oriented policies and so on, it's going to be extremely difficult for anybody to keep him in the next general election, unless he changes his ways. But if he continues the way he's going right now, I mean, it's going to be a landslide victory because he's actually the people's governor. Hmm. All right, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time on the program.
Okunabo Nkotare, that's civil rights advocate Thank and you. former special advisor to Governor of Wike, and also Ikenga Chibike spokesperson for the APC River State. Once again, gentlemen, thank you for being on the conversation. Thank you.